Brian, Christopher, Kohlberger in Albrightsville, Pennsylvania on a warrant for murder of Ethan, Zena, Madison, and Kaylee. I want to personally thank these agencies for their assistance in this case. Kohlberger resides in Pullman, Washington and is a graduate student at Washington State University. We will provide as much information as we can about the extradition to Idaho and the criminal process. However, due to Idaho state law, we are limited in what information we can release today until Kohlberger has been has his initial appearance in Idaho court. I want to express my appreciation to our local community, the people of Idaho and those throughout our nation who provided information to help us investigate these murders has been very impressive. We've received over 19,000 tips and we've conducted over 300 interviews. To recap this case, on the evening of November 12th, Kaylee and Madison arrived home at about 1.56 a.m. after visiting a local bar and street food vendor. Ethan and Zana were at the Sigma Chi house before arriving home around 1.45 a.m. The two surviving roommates had also been in the community but returned around 1 a.m. On the morning of November 13th, a 911 call was made at 11.58 a.m. reporting an unconscious person at the residence. The call came in, call came from inside the home from one of the surviving roommate's cell phones. Moscow police responded and found two victims on the second floor and two victims on the third floor. On November 17th, autopsies were conducted and the Latok County coroner confirmed the identity of the four victims. The cause and manner of death was homicide by stabbing. Some had defensive wounds and each had multiple, uh, each had been stabbed multiple times. These murders have shaken our community and no arrest will ever bring back these young students. However, we do believe justice will be found through the criminal process. This was a very complex and extensive case. We developed a clear picture over time and we stand assured that the work was not, the, the work is not done, but be assured the work is not done. This is just started. Since November, we have remained laser focused on pursuing, pursuing every lead in our pursuit of justice for the victims and their families. I recognize the frustration with the lack of information that's been released. However, providing any details in this criminal investigation might have tainted the upcoming criminal prosecution or alerted the suspect of our progress. We will continue to provide as much information as we can as the process moves forward. Today, I want to specifically thank our dedicated Moscow Police Department detectives, patrol officers, the Idaho State detectives, the Idaho State troopers, and their crime lab technicians and scientists, and the Federal Bureau of Investigation for the resources and personnel to conduct this massive investigation. It was the dedication of them and the persistence and the numerous hours that led to an arrest. Fortunately, these highly skilled people work together as a cohesive team to solve this case. I also want to thank our community and the nation. Over the past six weeks, I've been continually reminded of how much our community cares. Locally, public support has been exceptional with kind words, food for investigators, and letters of support. You will never know how much your words of encouragement help us through these trying times. I appreciate each of you and each of your kindness. Agencies and individuals from across the nation have reached out to us to express their support to this department. I'm reminded how our Moscow community, our families, and the nation has been impacted by this daily. Finally, I do want to thank our media partners for the help. You kept this in the uh, news. You helped us with tips. 
You kept things going, and we truly appreciate that. And you are the product of those 19,000 tips that we received, which is an impressive number. I would like to uh, invite Bill Thompson, the county prosecutor, up at this time. Good afternoon, folks. My name is Bill Thompson. I'm the Lake Talk County prosecutor. And it's sad to be here, but happy to be here at the same time. As Chief Fry indicated, um, a criminal complaint was filed yesterday here in Lataw County, charging the defendant, Mr. Kohlberger, with four counts of first degree murder, in addition to felony burglary, which involves entering the residence with the intent to commit the crime of murder. Mr. Kohlberger, and let me preface, there is a pending case now in court, and I and my office and the investigators have to live with the restrictions that our Supreme Court places on pretrial publicity. That said, I promise you we will share with you, through the court process or otherwise, whatever we are allowed to. I just appreciate your patience on that. The uh, factual basis for the charges are summarized in what's called a probable cause affidavit that is on file with the court. According to the rules of the Idaho Supreme Court, that is sealed until Mr. Kohlberger is physically back in Lataw County and has been served with the Idaho arrest warrant. At that time, we expect that that affidavit will be available to you so you can share the true facts with all of your readers and your watchers and your listeners uh, and all the people who are interested and really need to know what's going on. So please have patience with us on that. Uh, we hope to get that to you as soon as we can. As far as Mr. Kohlberger, I can share with you that he is a graduate student at Washington State University and has an apartment residence over at Pullman. He has had an initial appearance in front of a judge in Pennsylvania. He is being held without bond, and the warrant from our magistrate judge here also provides for no bond. We understand that he's scheduled to be back in court in Pennsylvania next Tuesday afternoon and that a public defender has been appointed for him there. The process at this point is since he was arrested in another state, he has the opportunity to either waive extradition and return voluntarily to the state of Idaho, or if he prefers not to waive extradition, then we will initiate extradition proceedings through our governor's office. If we do that, it can take a while for him to get here. So again, I'm asking for your patience and understand that's just the way the system works. Once he gets here, uh, he'll have an initial appearance with our magistrate. They'll deal with issues such as making sure counsel is, uh, competent counsel is representing him and the case will be scheduled for further hearings. Your primary source of factual information is going to be the court record because that's what the Supreme Court says uh, we need to refer you to. So please pay attention to what's going on in court and have people there to watch and hear what's being said uh, as, as an attorney, myself, my office, we are limited on what we are allowed by the courts to say outside of the courtroom. So please just work with us. Finally, as the chief indicated, this is not the end of this investigation. In fact, this is a new beginning. You all now know the name of the person who has been charged with these offenses. Please get that information out there. Please ask the public, anyone who knows about this individual, to come forward, call the tip line, report anything you know about him to help the investigators and eventually our office and the court system understand fully everything there is to know about not only the individual, but what happened and why. Next, I'll introduce Colonel Ked Wells from the Idaho State Police. Thank you. Well, good afternoon. My name is Kedrick Wills. I serve as a director of the Idaho State Police and certainly want to express our appreciation for your attendance here today. These tragic murders took four young, vibrant lives from our community. Nothing we do can bring them back. The only thing that we can do in law enforcement to honor their memories that we know of is to bring this to a successful conclusion. This has been a very difficult time for the families, the university, the community, and the state of Idaho. However, it is also proven that communities come together in tough times. 
certainly appreciate the support of the local community and our national audience that has been following us as we've worked, our investigators have worked through this case. I'm thankful also to you, the media partners, who have helped keep this case in the forefront that generates the tips and continues what we hope will continue to generate information that will help us to a conclusion of this proceeding. I'd like to express our appreciation on behalf of the Idaho State Police to Chief Fry, his leadership, and the entire Moscow Police Department for the way that they handled this from the very beginning. He directed the right people to the right, right positions that led us to this conclusion today. I've had the utmost confidence in this investigation and in Chief Fry, as well as in Mr. Bill Thompson and the Latah County Prosecutor's Office, who've been a great partner throughout this. Nothing has deterred the commitment of the investigators who've worked on this case, regardless of the organization they represent. It's been very trying and very difficult, as we know, as you know, that it has been on those investigators as they do the tedious work that they're so good at doing. The partnerships is what's led here as well. The partnerships between Moscow Police Department, the, I'd like to express our appreciation with the Federal Bureau of Investigation, specifically the special agent in charge out of the Salt Lake City Division, Dennis Rice, and also what the work that happened in the last 24 hours in, in Pennsylvania with, with the arrest with the Pennsylvania State Police and Colonel Evan Chick with the Pennsylvania State Police. We appreciate what they've done across the nation to help us as well. As Bill shared, this investigation is far from over. In fact, I appreciate what he shared, that this is not an ending, but rather a new beginning. The difference now is, as he shared, that we are dictated what information we can share by the court process and by laws in our state of Idaho. And so we will share, as he shared, um, Mr. Thompson uh, is absolutely committed to share everything he can share through the court process. We've got to make sure that we don't get in front of that process. And uh, we really appreciate, deeply appreciate everybody's support here. The relationships that were forged here and the partnerships that were forged have led to this. And based on that is why we're here today. And we continue to believe that the best way we can honor these four lives that have been taken is to make sure that we have a successful outcome here.